What's up everyone, Steven here from techmaker.tv. In this episode, I wanna take another look at the futurism gem and uh, go over a couple of things that I missed on the first time we went through this. This episode is sort of a sidestep from our blogging series that we've been working through where we're building out this blog from scratch. Um, but technically this is the 14th episode in that series, so if you want to see that entire series from start to finish, you can do that over on www.techmaker.tv. Otherwise, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and go ahead and subscribe to the channel since you're already here. Um, but let's go ahead and jump in. If you followed along with the first part of our futurism discussion, uh, you will remember that what happens is when we refresh this page, you'll quickly see these divs down here with this text flicker. And you really can't see it because it happens pretty quick, but it says hold on briefly. Uh, we can see that in the code over here. We just have this div that says hold on um, and an MB4, which just splits these onto different lines. Now, what I thought um, and did not quite wrap my head around before I recorded the last episode um, is that this is really useful for infinite scroll. And if we go over to the documentation, um, it tells us that basically what it's going to do is put this custom futurism element in the form of a div or a table row into the uh, window. And then it has this intersection observer, which I understood and I think I'm right, is basically set up so that whenever something intersects with the window, aka the screen in, as the default, I assume, um, it renders so over WebSocket. So interception, Intersection Observer is a built-in uh, JavaScript class, I believe, um, into, the, into the window. So essentially, it lets us tell whenever two objects are on top of each other or not. Um, I'm way oversimplifying that, and this is not really something I've studied a lot. Um, but anyway, I wanted to kind of give you the context for why I was thinking this was going to do what it was going to do. And then I had a little epiphany after I uh, played with this a little while for why this isn't doing what I was expecting. Because I was kind of expecting uh, that whenever I would refresh the page, only maybe the first paragraph would be loaded, and as, as I scrolled, more paragraphs would be loaded. But we're kind of tricking ourselves here because if we look back over at the div, the div doesn't really have any height other than this little margin that we gave it. So actually all the divs are on screen. So if we go over, not to the terminal, sorry. If we go over here and we open up our um, browser and we come down into here, let's open this all the way up down into our let me just inspect the paragraph, that'd be the easiest, right? Um, so if we refresh this really quick, I'm gonna lose all of that. But um, I haven't scrolled at all, and if I inspect this, um, I have basically all of the divs for all of this stuff is already loaded. And so that's happening um, before we get a chance to even scroll. So what I was playing with is, the thing is, all the divs are on the screen already because they'd have this zero height. So if we just throw a style equals height 1000 pixels here, um, watch what happens now. So if I refresh and we come down here, you'll see that the third is actually a futurism element and it has this giant blob of text in here. I don't think there are any more. Yeah, so it's just this custom futurism element, but watch what happens as we scroll. So we go down and then poof, it gets replaced by a div class content element, which is our, our basically default HTML, or our HTML that we want rendered rather. So that's pretty cool. Um, let's go look at one more like, longer post. I think this one has more stuff on it. So if we inspect here, um, let's see, we should have several features and elements. Looks like we do. Um, let's just start at the top and start scrolling. So, so we had one become a div, two, three, so on and so forth. So it's quite cool. Um, <clears throat> still have an issue. I haven't updated the gym and I haven't checked if they've done any updates. I've kind of been out for a little while. So uh, there's some kind of issue with the... Um, 
uh, active storage or something like that. I'm not 100% sure. So anyway, uh, I was talking with him about that. Um, but anyway, I wanted to just kind of clarify the the loading issue because I thought that was really, really cool once I realized what was going on. Um, okay, then there's one other thing that I wanted to talk about, which is authentication. So if we go to something and we're not actually, you can see our 1,000 pixel height here. Uh, I'm not actually saying that 1,000 pixels is a good idea. I just kind of did that to exaggerate the point. Um, but basically what's happening is that our WebSocket um, Action Cable authentication is, is hooked up right now in this app to be based on the logged in user. And so it just won't work for this sort of public setup that we have here. So I got tricked with that also because uh, I was wondering all of a sudden why it wasn't working and I realized when I was working on it originally I was logged in so the action cable stuff works fine. But right now if we go over to our, if we refresh and go over here, uh, we should have a, um, an authorized, unauthorized connection attempt was rejected here. So. Um, for this to work in a public setting, you would have to modify the authentication strategy. Um, and I'm, I'm actually not sure what I'm going to do with all of this yet. Um, I kind of, I may just roll back uh, to not having futurism in this particular app for the purposes of the series, but I'm not sure yet. So uh, if I decide to keep it, because I'm kind of into it now that I know more about it, but still have some worries about how it's going to impact SEO and some other stuff. So in any case, um, I'm still looking into all of that, but I wanted to just go ahead and point this out in case you get really confused if you're working on some other app. Um, you do have to pay attention to the authentication strategy. And just in case it wasn't clear uh, why that was doing that, I opened an incognito window. I just kind of replayed what I had recorded back to myself and realized, oh crap, I didn't say I was opening an incognito window. So. This is incognito, this is regular, um, not incognito. Um, and I'm logged in over here, so that's the difference. Anyway, um, I think that's about it for this episode. I kind of wanted to do a little clarification after the last one. I'm going to keep exploring this. i um, doing a lot of exploration into kind of newer tools that are coming out and prepping some episodes. So I think a lot of people who are subscribing to the channel are really here for kind of, you know, what's new and what's up and coming and all this kind of stuff. So planning on putting out quite a bit more content about that um, as well as some more in-depth Ruby stuff. So anyway, if you're into that and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Otherwise, I'll talk to you next time.